Well, folks, it's your old buddy, Luke Clayton, and my buddy, Jeff Rice, and your buddy, Jeff. Good morning. Al, Jeff, you doing okay? I'm doing wonderful. Well, we're down here at Jeff's Ranch, the Bucket Bass Ranch, folks. Hogs are waiting in line to hit these feeders. We're, <laughs> we're going to do a little summer hog hunting. It's a little bit warm down here. It's Jeff. a little bit warm, but, but, you know, this time of year when it's really warm, I mean, majority of the day those hogs spend down in the creek and line in the, in the water near the creek, but early morning and right at dusk they're up and they're hitting feeders so what we're going to do is do like the hogs do during the midday we're going to take it easy and oh yes we there are is an air yes we are but thank you again folks for tuning in we're going to cover some ground in today's show for yes sure. we are and thanks for watching we're getting uh seven to eleven thousand of you folks listening every week watching i do so much radio i always refer to it as listening Absolutely. And I want to mention that, uh, folks, catfishradio.org. They can go there and listen yep. to four segments. You can listen to it on your device, your cell phone, download it, or, or whatever. But that will carry on what we do and give you a little bit more outdoors. Jeff, uh, it's not long until bow season. That's right. I have a brand new bow when I get back home that I'm going to take delivery of, a gearhead bow. And folks, if you're a bow hunter, you may not have heard of Gearhead. They've been around, but they're an awesome bow. I've done a lot of research. Skip Peterson, that's the head honcho with, mm -hmm. with Gearhead. I've known Skip a long time, but these things were robotically built. I mean, it's a different design than I've ever seen. I'm yeah. eager to check it out. Yeah, yeah, me too. And I've seen, I know, I feel like I've shot it, but I haven't. It's coming in this week, and I'm going to put it to work. Deer and hogs and, and you name it, you know. Let's talk a little bit about archery, because archery season is, is just around the corner. It is. And uh, first of all, folks, just so you know, uh, your license is due. So if you uh, yep. don't have your license yet, go out and get your license um, and uh, get ready to gear up. You know, we, we've probably got some tips here we can toss you away, because Luke and I do a lot of bow hunting for, for hogs and for deer. And um, that's kind of the nice thing when we, we come hunt out here. You know, we're hunting deer during the archery season but we always have the hog that come, comes in as well so that's either, true. either or but um, that's right you know the, one of the things you really got to be careful with when you when you bow hunt you know a lot of you folks probably use ladder stands and a lot of you use ground blinds but for those folks out there using ladder stands climbing stands those kind of things Luke it is it is paramount that you use a, a good safety harness mm -hmm. I mean that is your loved ones want you to come home and you know, the sure. safety harness is um, is critical. It's a critical piece of your equipment. I don't even go hunt if I don't have a safety harness and I'm going to be in a ladder stand or, you know, up in a tree somewhere. I'm going to have my, my safety harness. True, and a lot of folks are listening right now that's old school, you know, been hunting, bow hunting forever, like me. They're saying, oh, those safety devices, they are a nightmare. The early safety devices that I was exposed to were hard in the dark. Uh, Houdini couldn't get in one yep, of them. Yep. But now the ones that Jeff and I use, they're, I mean, they're easy to put on. Yeah. Uh, don't not use one just because you remember, if you're like me, you remember the ones from 25 years ago. That, that's right. I you mean, know? you may think it's a nightmare trying to wear some uncomfortable harness, but it's a real nightmare for your family when you don't come home. That's true. I mean, Very that's true. that's what that's the whole thing. So make sure you got good equipment. I've got I've got a couple of um, um, you know harnesses that I use, and you can get ones that you know have like the the almost like a safety belt strap. They're, yep. they're easy to pop on. Yep. They're they're relatively comfortable. They're they're not bulky and heavy. You know, go out, shop around, see what you come up with. But, folks, that is number one important thing. Make sure you have that. Secondly, let's get into the bow. Let's talk a little bit about shooting your bows, being prepared. I mean, I know guys that, you know, a week before bow season, they grab their bow, they go out, they fling a couple arrows, and they're like, oh, I'm, I'm pretty close. No, folks. When you're out pursuing, especially deer, I mean, hogs, anything really, you need to practice. You owe it to that game to make a ethical and a good shot. Including hogs. Gosh, everything. Sir. I mean, you really do. You know, getting, and, and to me, getting my bow out and shooting it all the time, I like that. I enjoy that. That's you you stay, You me. stay in tune. You stay yep. in tune. So, you know, get the bows out. Start shooting. You know, get the 3D targets. Yep. I know you were talking about the 3D targets earlier today. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of nice to have that. You almost feel like you're in a, in a scenario where you're, 
you know, yep. you're really hunting. And then you mentioned one other thing earlier today too, is if you're shooting from an elevated platform or stand, you need to practice from one. Yeah. Right? I oh, mean, yeah. Yeah. It's, I don't know how many deer I've missed shot over. That's the, the nemesis of shooting from an elevated position, folks. If you're a bow hunter, you yep. do know what I'm talking about. How many have you shot under? Not many, but many. Uh, for some reason, when you're a steep angle, it's so easy to shoot over one. It, it uh, sure I, is. I, I, I've never known a bow hunter that did not agree with that fact. So, yeah, get up in the tree and shoot. Uh, practice. It, it, most people nowadays use a 100 grain broadhead, either mechanical or mm -hmm. uh, fixed broadhead, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure your fill points are, are 100 grain, of course. Those things can trip you up a little bit. Although at 25 yards in, there's not that much difference from point of impact on a 20, uh, 100 grain or 125. But use the same weights, and by all means, I don't sacrifice a broadhead. Just say, I'm going to use it to make sure the flight you know, if you're fit using a fixed broadhead, the plane might it might shoot a little different. It might, it shouldn't, but it might. And then, uh, of course, a uh, mechanical. Go ahead and, and sacrifice a mechanical and shoot it. Exactly, and take that one that you've sacrificed. And I always mark one arrow on my quiver, and I use it for coyotes. I use that that, that yep. arrow for coons or whatever I mean you may not want to use it on a deer but you know have that one arrow that you can fling it just about anything that you know if you, you got because I shoot coyotes all the time coming through and you know I like to get them out of here if I can and so that one sacrificial that arrow, one sacrificial arrow <laughs> right. it, it goes to good use so. that's true uh, and, and if you're an old bow hunter you know you know all this now I will say this when I started bow hunting years ago I start. I never will forget. I started. Mark Ballette, our mutual friend, yep. at BNC Outfitters down mm -hmm. in Groveton, Texas. Mark started me out, and he he was a lifetime bow hunter. Mark is, and he said, "Okay, let's." We started in March. I got a 3D deer target. I shot that thing there every every day that I could. When I'd get home from work early enough or whatever, I was shooting that. I was shooting that target, and I got really good. I, I set a deal in my mind don't shoot I'm not going to shoot a deer over 20 yards and I have killed them farther than that now in, in the ensuing years but I wasn't going to shoot a deer the first day Jeff that after six months of diligent practice I was so confident I mean I'd be up in a tree my tree stand shooting that deer sure target mm -hmm. I was I'll never forget, never will forget I was down at Mark's place up in a tree stand I heard a fence creak you know barbed wire creak there's a trail right over there about 10 yards from my tree. And I looked, and it was not a trophy, but it was a trophy. It was probably three-year-old. Never would have made a great buck. I think it was seven points. I've still got to rack. I saw those antlers coming out of that tree, and I drew, and he stepped and stopped broadside at 20 yards, <laughs> just like I'd been shooting. And I, my heart was not racing. I mean, very relaxed. He looked just like my target, you know, and I put it on there, and shot that buck made a little arc ran 52 yards and I saw it and at that point I had never killed a deer with a bow but I saw that buck run and I saw what the devastation that I was shooting a shooting a big old three two and three quarter inch vortex back in those days mm -hmm. and one heck of a cutting you could see yeah. what was happening <laughs> inside that deer he mm -hmm. ran 53 yards and I said wow you know man I've done it mm -hmm. I felt like I'd conquered the world but that's what bow hunting is all about. It's getting close. So close, sometimes you can smell a rutting buck. I, you have too. That's right. Well, and the practice. That's what we were just yeah. talking about. He was shooting every night. You know, you don't have to come home and shoot 100 arrows a night. No. Good Lord. If you do anything, go home, shoot one or two. Because, yeah. you know, when you hunt, you're going to shoot one arrow. Likely, maybe two. That's maybe. That's right. You'd be lucky to shoot two, but typically it's yeah. one arrow. Yeah. I'll go home. You know, pull out the, the bow, shoot one arrow. How did I do? You know, and my bow is on. I shoot enough to where I know how I'm going to do because I shoot enough. But for those of you out there that are the occasional go out shoot once in a whileers, you know, you owe it to, like I said, you owe it to the game, you owe it to yourself. You know, get get really proficient, and especially if you buy or or acquire, get a new bow. You've got this new bow coming from yep. Gearhead Archery. I'll be. You're going to want to shoot that. You know, get it set up. Yep. Get it ready to go. Go to a good technician. Absolutely. Uh, a bow bow mechanic. We used to call. Them. 
get somebody that can serve that peep in. If that peep is not served in right, yep. uh, if you've ever had one that wasn't done correctly, it's a nightmare. It'll turn on you, uh, and you're right in the middle of a situation where you can't see through your right. peep. That's a bad deal. And Jeff, <laughs> here's what I do. Here's a tip, and I won't. I don't want to try like to be dictating to anybody how to set the pins up, but I created a thing for a system for me that works. I set one pin dead on at 25 yards. Mm -hmm. It's the top pin and it's the green pin. It's at 25 yards. I'm good without any kind of overhold or, or elevating out to 30, 32 yards. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to be shooting. I did, you know, I guided the elk hunts and, and bear out, okay. out in the mountains for six years. Now there, that's a different scenario. Uh, I've never killed an animal with a bow over 33 yards, and that was a buck up in North Dakota at the last minute of shooting line. Mm -hmm. But that 25 yard deal, if you said, now there are people that say, nope, let's set one at 20 and 30 and 40, and that's good too. It, just whatever you're comfortable with, but rather than splitting the dis distance from my 20 to my 30 yard pin, I'd rather pull it up with one pin. Mm -hmm. But you'll as you get into bow hunting and archery practice, you'll figure out what works for you. Right, you know? right. Figure out what works best for mm -hmm. you and be able to judge distance. I mean, you know, a lot of people do use range finders. Um, I use a range finder. A lot of people don't and they guess. And you know what? Guessing is sometimes not a good thing yeah, unless you really know your yardage. Uh, what I'll do is I'll get up in a tree stand and I'll say, okay, let's look at that tree. Then I'll zap that tree. That tree is 22 yards, and I'll make a mental note. Now, I've been crazy enough in some of my stands here that I'll go on a mark on there what it is. Oh, yeah. So when you're standing in that tree stand, you're going, oh, that tree over there is 30 yards because it's marked. And you know what? That's a good thing because you've got a deer walk through. He walks just this side of a 33-yard 33 33-yard 33 tree, you know he's just, just at 30 if he's on this side of the tree. It's a great way to do things. So yep. now some people hunt all over the place. I've got permanent stands in here and you know so that's why I could do stuff like that. But yeah. it's little things like that that make a huge difference. It, it definitely does, Jeff. Yeah. Uh, practice though. Now I will say this, the bows that we have today this gearhead bow coming in, once I take it and get it set up, get the uh, peep served in, get my sight pins and get on at 20 yards, I don't expect it to take me long to get really proficient with it. I mean, right. proficient, I'm not a tournament archer, but proficient for me for hunting, you know. Mm -hmm. I think I expect that to happen quick. Now, back when I started with the bows that we had 25 years ago, you, you better start uh, six months ahead. Mm -hmm. They just weren't as... I don't know. They were. They were. The technology wasn't there with them. You know that, Jeff. When mm -hmm. you started, mm -hmm. think about a bow back 25 years ago, mm -hmm. and the speed. Here's here is a big kicker, folks. That that you probably want to pay attention to if you're a new bow hunter. Now, a young dude, big strong guy, can pull. Most guys can pull one time 70 pounds. That's too much for me at my age. I can. I can still shoot 60 comfortably, but 70 is too much for me. It's too much for about three quarters of the guys that want to start at 70. Mm -hmm. It is. And it's not necessary anymore to shoot 70 pounds unless you just don't have any problem pulling it. And, but right. you got to think about when you're a, a bow hunter my age in your upper 60s. These old joints and all this, years of pulling, I, it's got to take a toll. So what? This bow that I'm going to be shooting is 55 pounds, mm -hmm. and it's it's uh, it's going to shoot. I can tell you about what it's going to shoot. It's going to shoot about 270 to 80, somewhere in there. More than enough. Per second. More than enough. More than enough. So if you're a lady listening to us, and uh, don't don't think you got to pull 55. I mean that's a lot for some ladies. I've mm -hmm. taught people to shoot. But uh, your wife shoots. 48 pounds is what she shoots. And she has killed plenty of animals. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. so you know, uh, but but that's that's a big deal. Do not, if you're new to, don't, I don't care, don't start off at 70 pounds if you're getting your first boat. Uh, do absolutely not do agree. That. Well, folks, let's take a quick commercial here. We'll come back. We'll talk a little bit more about archery. And um, maybe I'll even slip out with my bow and do a hot summer hunt. What about that? Uh, that'll work. <laughs> we'll be back. Uh. Lone Star Pond and Bargain Center, 6509 I-30 on the Greenwich Road in Greenville. 
your one-stop shop for TVs, electronics, computers, and gaming systems. Lone Star Pawn offers a giant selection of hunting, fishing, outdoor gear, and firearms. We've got everything from lawn and garden equipment and job site tools to musical instruments. For the best deals and pawn rates in town, come see us on the south side of the Frontage Road in Greenville. Need a park for the right price? Look for that red and blue sign, Henley Auto Supply, 1510 Stonewall. Over 800,000 car crest parts to choose from. Domestic, European, and Asian parts. Henley Auto Supply, 903-455-1969. 455-1969. Henley Auto Supply has the right part to keep your vehicle running. Backed by the best hometown service. Henley Auto Supply. Great people, great products, great prices. Henley Auto Supply and CarQuest. Folks, welcome to the Bucket Bass Ranch. We're uh, out here for a hot summer hunt. It's the end of July and it is humid as all get out. Today's high 107. So, headed to the blind. Timmy's hunting from camp, so we had uh, a bunch of hogs in the pond at camp. <laughs> Milling around. Went over to the feeder, but they hadn't gone off yet, so they milled along. So I put some corn in there, they'll be back. I'm sure we'll hear her shoot. I'm heading over to the, uh, the hog line to see if we can't make something happen here, but I might swing by the shame line first just to see what things look like. So stick with me. I'll go here to Bucket Pass, so we'll be back. Okay, Whew. they were at the Shane blind, as you saw there a second ago, but there was no corn under the feeder, so I heard the hog blind go off, so I'm, I'm heading that way now. Let's see if we can't cut them off at the pass here. I'll bet you I'll get there and they'll probably be in that feeder. It's a little warm out here today. But... All right, I'm gonna kinda be quiet because we're getting close. So I'll be back here in a second. See what we can find here. Hopefully they're at that feeder and we'll get a shot. All right, I gotta keep it quiet. Slow down here a little bit.
first set of wheels didn't come with hassles. It can be that way again at Tire Pros. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that little segment that was very hot. I'm sorry I had to set the camera down to get the shot because I forgot my tripod. Shame on me. All right, well, Luke, um, we were talking a little bit about archery. Archery season's coming up, and um, one thing that Luke was talking, we were talking a little bit earlier about the tracking of an animal. I mean, it's when you shoot an animal, I don't care if it's a hog, a deer, and it does run off, always owe it to that game to go after them even if you think it was a bad shot you know now i personally take my camera so i always get film and i always go back and look at that you film and say did. what did i do and then based on that film i i can decide you know do i wait do i go you know of course if it's in the heat of the summer uh, i pretty much go but i mean that that's really critical and one thing i will always tell somebody when you shoot an animal and you find blood stay on the blood trail don't go venturing off. If you have a blood trail, be on that blood trail. Stay on that blood trail. Follow that blood trail, you know? Well, we could talk for an hour on the blood trailing <laughs> game. Yes, we could. Uh, I could. I mean, uh, just going back through the different scenarios that's happened in, in, in my career. But when you shoot it, just say we're deer hunting. A lot of you are getting ready for bow season. I am and Jeff is. You, okay, you've got a big buck or a doe. I don't care. You, sh you your shot looks good. You put the right at the crease of its shoulder. It'll look good to you. Stay put. Don't jump out right then. Stay right. put. Be quiet. Don't none of this stuff you see on TV, high fiving and all that. That can come later. Stay quiet. And watch. When you shoot and you hit an animal. The most important thing, I think, is what, see what happens. Where does he go? He ran by that tree. Oh, he ran by that tree. And listen, watch, listen, because sometimes you'll hear him crash. Oh, yeah, very, very frequently. Oh, yeah. And so, yeah, give him some time and then just set, stay put. Absolutely. I, I can think back on times when I messed up in, in early, early bow hunting, mm -hmm. but it is very, very common with an arrow that that animal is more than unless you spine him or something like that it's more likely he's going to run jeff you know that uh where uh, if you're hunting with a with a center fire a lot of times if you have the, just the right shot you know you'll many bucks i've dropped with a center fire right mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. usually not going to happen with a bow is it jeff right no and a lot of times if you even get a pass through that's great you get a lot of get to get a lot more blood but give that animal time to expire because the, the minute you let him jump and run it, it, it's a game changer. That thing will, may never stop. He may run. He may be mortally wounded. If you jump him. If you jump you're him. You're not kidding. I've been there and done that. And you I shot to. that big buck here two years ago, and I shot him a little far back than I, what I wanted to because he, he was moving, and I, I tried to stop him, but he didn't, and I, I let the arrow fly, and it, it still looked like a pretty good shot, but I watched him. He walked. He didn't even run. It was amazing. Yeah, he, he was he hit walked. hard. 15 yards and stood there and eventually bedded down and he eventually died right there but I'll guarantee if I would have got immediately out of that stand and walked over to him when he was laying there he'd have got up he he'd might have run. been across the, the sloop I'd have yeah. never seen him again I'd never would have never very seen him. true once they get up and get the adrenaline going uh, oh, they, yeah. they can be hard so give them oh I always say I give them 30 minutes I probably give them 20 if I feel like the shots good and then sometimes you'll see him go down then you don't have to well, give him a few minutes make sure he's down make sure he's down because that one that laid down that big buck yeah. I watched him and I could see his chest going up and down oh, so I knew he was still and, and I thought do I do I and I waited probably 40 minutes 45 minutes and it got dark and I'm still watching him and then I could see the white of his belly but I'm like you know what I'm not gonna chance it I backed out for probably five hours yeah. and went right back in there. My wife and I went in there and, and we found him oh, yeah. and he had moved, but I'd rather do that than, than try to chase him. For sure. You know? Well, Jeff, this, you know, this has been a fun show, a little bow hunting talk and action, a hunt. We're getting ready for bow season. Getting this is ready exciting. for bow season. Really, yeah. this, this is that time of year. Uh, I tell you, it won't be long and we'll be out here in the woods and I've got some hunts coming up. and. Uh, I want to plug Gearhead Archery one more time. Most folks have never heard of Gearhead Archery. Mm -hmm. Go online, gearheadarchery.com. Look at these bows. 
They make a bow, and the bow I'm getting is 28 inches, axle to axle. Mm -hmm. They make one, and I'm, it's just because of tradition with me. They make a 24 inch bow, but I, my arms are so long, I've got a 30 inch draw, uh. and I just couldn't, I couldn't visualize it. But they're, they're getting the arrow speed out of a 24 inch bow. Check out some of these videos on. Yeah. Uh, or, go, or go to catfishradio.org. Yep. And there's a link. That you know, is. On there That's the way to tree. find it easily. Just go to Catfish Radio because you'll find all sorts of fun and interesting stuff. Yeah. Um, you can buy Luke's book, Kill the Grill. Um, yeah. We've it's plugged on. that before in the past on shows. Great book. Uh, just go on catfishradio.org. Take take a look at it. You, you'll listen to some segments that yep. Luke's got out there, radio stuff. and um, Larry Wysoon, Campfire Talk. Yeah, absolutely. Everybody knows Larry. Hey, Larry and I were hunting together, fishing together, too, last week. Yeah. Had a ball. That's another story, though. <laughs> but, uh, well, yeah. we want to thank you, folks, once again. I mean, we're going to wrap the show up here, and we want to thank you again for, for your you, you know your loyalty and watching us and and your your liking and sharing our shows we have so much fun we have more fun doing this stuff and and we want to thank you guys for joining us every week and every week we're going to try to bring you another adventure and with fall rolling in here now there's going to be a lot of adventures right buddy yeah but it's good to have this rascal back i've been solo on this for a couple <laughs> he's been traveling <laughs> but yeah yeah we're going fall is just here oh it's exciting it's just here man yep. and uh so much good stuff so folks thanks for watching and uh tune in next week absolutely here put it here buddy you bet buddy. all right <laughs> being on the move used to be hassle-free find your way there again at tire pros